As far as the ladders from previous uh, lesson, I'm going to give you one little bit of a piece of advice and uh, well, it's going to just be one more thing for you to make sure you get to, you make your way to California. All right. <laughs> we'll make it to California one day, sir. All right. Um, if, uh, well, today we're going to talk about scaffolds, but I'm going to touch up on the ladder from last uh, lecture. Um, if anybody ever has taken a motorcycle course, all right, so kind of uh, shifting the uh, things a little bit. Uh, one thing that, uh, well, I took the safety course uh, before I got my motorcycle license. So um, one thing that was pounded into us and they made it a religious uh, thing that you always have to have to do it. Whenever you stop the bike, uh, you put your left foot on the ground and you look to your left to see if there's anybody. Look behind you, right? See if there's anybody there because you are invisible. Um, people tend not to see the bikes, right? Or just before you start going, start moving, look behind you, right? So always, always have to do it. Now, when it comes to the ladders, uh, when you're climbing down, um, I want you to have the same sort of a ritual to do it. Look down just before you make that last step. I'm not, I don't know how many times, and you, it is going to probably happen to you, hopefully not, uh, that you think you're on the last step, but you're on the second last step. And that kind of throws you out of balance and uh, some things can happen when, uh, when, 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 you, when, when this happens. You can get a whiplash, you can injure your spine, you can do all kinds, you can, you know, all kinds of things can happen to you. So before you step down, you think you're on the last step, take a look, make sure that you're on the last step, okay? Free advice. All right. <clears throat> uh, though the rule was when it uh, don't throttle out. Hmm. Can you speak English? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying, but, uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. Now, we're going to move on to the scaffolds. Now, before we begin with the scaffolds, um, things are changing uh, in the construction environment. Uh, very rarely you are going to uh, be asked to set up the scaffold by yourself on a construction site. Although sometimes on the smaller jobs, you're going to rent a scaffold and uh, you, will, uh, you will be required to put it up uh, all by yourself. So uh, you need to know some things uh, when it comes to pulling that uh, uh, scaffolds and other elevating devices. Uh, well, um, all right, thank you. <laughs> um, the biggest enemy when it comes to this that can work against you is the one common thing that applies to all of us. It is called the gravity. And it doesn't take much of a height for you to get hurt. As we talked about uh, yesterday, uh, you could be sitting in the chair and fall down and you can injure yourself. So there's no specific height that is considered to be safe if you fall down. Right? Um, all right, now the other thing is, yes, uh, nowadays um, how it works is that there are companies that will provide the scaffold construction for you. They will come over, they will set it up for you, and they will leave and you'll be able to use it. However, what if something is undone? What if something gets bumped and something gets damaged? You should be able to tell some sort of signs that something is unsafe to use. All right. Uh, or, who knows, maybe some of you are going to have opportunity to work for a company that sets up scaffolds and other platforms, right? All right, so scaffold safety, All right? <clears throat> Common scaffolds, hazards that we're talking about here. 
um, hazard is a danger or potential of a, something happening. Okay. Uh, now, um, no guardrails on scaffolds. Okay. What is a scaffold, first of all? That's a scaffold right here. That's the most primitive way of scaffolding, but there are some bigger ones. Okay. So if there are no guardrails, that's a hazard. You can get hurt by falling off. Now, um, when it comes to working on site, um, we are, as humans, we are habitual creatures. So uh, whenever we get to, whenever whatever habits we develop, most likely we are going to follow those habits with our actions when things get tense as far as you know you might be tired or you could be overworked sometimes you work longer hours uh you could be preoccupied with something uh and then uh you will your, your attention is going to be pained a little bit uh, so uh, um, then the habits kick in uh, i remember uh well here's the you know we're in canada so here's a hockey example <laughs> uh, uh, one hockey example, uh, some time ago, it was a nice few years ago, there was that thing that was, you know, still probably his coach's corner, uh, when Mr. Don Cherry was giving advice to the young kids who uh, aspire to be great hockey players. Um, and he would be analyzing some elements of the game that was happening at that, uh, at that time. Uh, so it was like during the break time. And uh, there was some, uh, uh, there was one or two couple of uh, crossbars that were hit by the puck. So uh, Mr. Don Cherry would uh, say something uh, like this, you know, here's to all your kids, um, uh, stop practicing. So he would say something like that, stop practicing or, you know, having fun. Uh, how many times have you done this? Uh, you shoot the puck to hit the crossbar. All right, and you shoot the puck to hit the crossbar, just you know for fun, um, you know uh, when there's nobody on the ice or whatever. Uh, so you develop the habit of hitting the crossbar. So when there's a situation during the game, you shoot that. Uh, your muscle memory is going to retain that uh, that kind of a habit, and uh, and you're more likely to hit the crossbar rather to actually put the puck in the net. Right, so that's as far as uh, as uh, what I'm saying is to you: develop good habits. Do not practice any bad habits. If you develop good habits, when it comes to uh, you being in action, you could be overworked, you could be tired, any kind of other distractions could be happening there. Uh, you will uh, uh, you will fall back, uh, uh, kind of subconsciously, onto your habits. Okay, so um, all right, let's go. Uh, so defective, uh, okay, no guardrails on scaffolds. That's a big hazard. Defective wood planks. Uh, you are putting what wood planks on the scaffold to walk on them. Uh, so if they're defective, you can step on it. This thing can break. It can slip. You can fall off. Unsafe access to scaffold, all right? Uh, or cross bracing not adequate. We're going to come back to that. Uh, hold on, just here, okay. Um, uh, inadequate footings and bridging of the scaffolds, all right? So we're going to come back to it. It's going to make more sense a little bit to it. Now, general requirements for, uh, for, for erecting the scaffolds here. Erect, dismantle all scaffolds according to the manufacturer's instructions and uh, competent persons, CP, all right? Direction. Uh, capacity must support, scaffold must support four times the intended load <clears throat> and that means uh, with you all the people who are going to be using it and all the tools and equipment that you're going to be carrying onto that scaffold there right uh there, it, the scaffold has to have stable footings and uh, base uh, uh, uh base blade uh, screw jacks and mud seals right so we're going to come back also it's going to make more sense make more sense to you General requirements continuing. Uh, platforms uh, at least 18 inches wide. All right. Ladder jack, pump jack, top plate, and roof brackets can be 12 inches wide. Right? Uh, front edge of the of all platform within 14 inches of the face of work. Like, trust me, it's going to make more sense. We're just going through that. Exceptions three in uh, three feet for uh, for for outriggers and eight sorry three inches and eighteen inches for 
plastering and uh, latting operations. Okay, so hold on here. Scaffold must be capable of uh, supporting its own weight and at least four times the expected load. Expected load includes workers, equipment, tools, and materials. Right? Now, um, base plate and mud seals are required. Uh, over here on the left, on the picture on the left, we see a muddy ground. Right? If you put that uh, with just a small base, and uh, when you put I apply heavy load to that, this thing is going to sink and it's going to throw the whole platform out of balance and things can fall off the platform, including you, all right? Uh, so uh, mud seals uh, with bigger uh, uh, bigger platforms are required and sometimes you're going to be required to put some, to put some uh, 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 like larger platforms made out of other materials that are wood, okay? whatever is required. There you go. Here's an example of a mud seal. Right? The, the ground is sort of not, not, I'm not saying uneven, but it could be muddy. You know, on the construction sites, uh, well, things happen that way. Right? So here's an example of uh, properly securing the, the, the feet of the scaffolds. Right? Uh, masonry blocks and bricks are not acceptable as the scaffold base. Here is an example of don't do this at home, kids, or don't do this anywhere else. This is not acceptable. It is going to make uh, a dodgy kind of a base, and it will. Uh, <laughs> I've done that, yeah. Somebody says, I've done it. Brody says, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, you're lucky that nothing has happened, okay? Uh, as I, I keep always saying, um, nothing happens when it comes to uh, working um, on construction sites, or as a matter of fact, anywhere else. Um, nothing happens until something happens. And whenever something happens, as far as an accident, when is, does it happen? It happens when you least need it, right? At the most inconvenient time. And how does it happen? Usually it happens in the most inconvenient way. Right? Uh, so, um, yeah, so that's, uh, don't do that, kids, all right? Don't do drugs, stay at school. And don't put masonry bricks under the scaffold. And drink milk. All right. All right, scaffold platform. Um, <clears throat> each platform on all working levels must be fully planked. Each platform on all working levels must be fully planked and secured to prevent movement. All right. So scaffold have sort of like scaffolds, they have like stories, right? Level one, level two, level whatever. So each level who's, has to be fully planked. Right? You should be able to walk on it. No more than one inch space between uh, uh, decking platform units and upright supports. We're gonna come back to that, which is gonna make sense too. Uh, wood scaffold planks must be nominal two inches by 10 inches. That's feet. Yeah, that's not inches, that's, that's feet. Uh, must uh, be scaffold grade bolt plank. The planks have to be uh, scaffold grade planks or equivalent. Can't just have any kind of boards or wood, put it there and, and expect to walk on it and nothing, 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 for it to, nothing to happen, all right? Here is an example of a braiding, all right? There's an OSHA label here. Uh, 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 there you go, scaffold plank right there. I'm not sure if you can see it here. There you go. All right. Proof tested, scaffold plank, all right. It has to be done that way. Okay, now planks uh, with visible de defects must not be used. All right, here's a visible defect on left, and here's another visible defect on the right. This thing has a really kind of long crack going right through it. So obviously, the, 
it's not structurally sound. And this one here is, uh, well, um, let's just say it's in a bad condition and it's an obvious thing. You just look at it and go, eh, I don't know about that, you know. Uh, so, uh, okay, there you go. Scaffold use. Do not use objects such as ladders, boxes, barrels, etc., on top of the scaffold platforms to increase the height. Sometimes you erect the scaffold uh, to a certain height and you just can't reach that fan in the ceiling there. Um, so you're going to put a six foot step ladder on top of that. You're going to climb that ladder and work on that thing. Don't do that. Right? If you do that, you're on your own. Um, planks must extend six inches past the support or secured. Do not paint platforms. Exception, platform edges might be covered or marked for ident identification. But do not paint the platforms the planks. Why not paint? Well, you don't know what the chemical structure of the paint is going to go do to that wood. It could be it, it, it could be okay, or that chemical, um, the, the, the chemicals that are in the paint could actually react with the wood in such a way that you can make the wood weaker. Uh, front edge. Uh, all right, so here is the platform of the scaffold. And here is the face. What's the face? Well, here's the wall of the building, all right? So that's where the, um, you know. so <clears throat> the front edge of the platform here has to be within 14 inches of the face of the building. So it's a little bit over, you know, one foot and two inches. Okay? That's the rules, safety rules. Okay? Scaffold playing six inches past the support. So when you put the planks, and here's the support frame, they have to extend six inches past that support in order for that thing to be safe and sound. All right. Cleats, just like uh, you know, if you play soccer, you get the or football, you get the shoes with the cleats on the bottom of it, so it, so uh, so you can stick to the grass uh, you can, uh, you know, better and more efficiently. Uh, can planks be pressure treated? I don't know how they, how they treat those, um, but the one rule that I know, it has to be approved and it has to be stamped. Whatever is being done as far as the technology of treating it, uh, I am not familiar with that, but it has to be stamped, approved, then you can use it. Um, so, <clears throat> Plus, do you want to work on the pressure-treated uh, wood all the time? I don't know. Well, that's a, you know, it's debatable, right? Uh, okay, so the, pl the planks have to be cleated, right? So they don't move. I don't think that is, this requires any further explanation. Cleats have to be there. If it's wooden plank, sometimes you're going to use the uh, manufactured planks with uh, with a frame that has those hooks on them, and uh, that serves as the cleats. All right, uh, scaffold access. You be you should be able to not only work safely while you're there, but how are you going to get there on that uh, on that scaffold platform? All right, scaffold access. Ladders needed if access more than two feet of the ground. If the platform is more than two feet, 24 inches of the ground, you need a ladder to go on it and get off of it. Right? Do not climb cross braces. What are cross braces? Here, if you're looking from the side, yeah, if you're looking from the side, Here's the, uh, here's the scaffold here, all right? And here are the planks. You're going to see cross braces just like that. They're mounted, all right? And they're pivoted right here. And you're going to see that, you're going to see those cross braces, all right? Just like that. So do not climb those cross braces, 
Has anybody done that? Don't want to know. Right? <laughs> of course, I knew someone was going to say yes. Um, place ladders securely. Ladders must be positioned so they will not tip the scaffold. Well, common sense. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah. All right, access to or from another surface, such as a window, can only be used when the scaffold is no more than four inches horizontally away from the face or from the window. So yes, can you climb the scaffold? Can you get on the scaffold from a window when this thing is, when the scaffold is placed right beside the building? Yes, you can, but the scaffold has to be placed no more than 14 inches away from that window, horizontally, and no more than 24 inches vertically. Of course. I keep getting those updates. All right, uh, portable access must be secured to prevent uh, scaffold, must, uh, the access must be secured to prevent displacement. So same as when we were using, uh, when we were talking about the ladders, so the same rules apply. Except you're not climbing a, you know, a wall of the building or accessing some, um, some spot that you're going to have to mount some device such as a speaker or light or wireless access point or whatnot, right? You're climbing a scaffold. So the same rules apply, extend at least three feet above the landing to provide handhold. And here is, whoa, wrong, here. An example of that. Right, that's a straight ladder, or it could be an extension ladder. Must extend three feet above the landing surface to provide handhold. Here's your landing surface, at least three feet. How do you know? You count the prongs. The prongs are three feet from each other. Sorry, the prongs are foot away from each other. So here, this distance from here to here is one foot. One, two, three, you got three feet. One, two, three. Three, you got three feet. Right? All right. Uh, attachable access ladder. Here is an example of attachable access ladder. Now, can we? Uh, yeah, okay. Yes, they are. Um, they are permittable to use, providing that it is actually made by the manufacturer and it's uh, and it's actually approved for use. So here is the. Uh, uh, attachable access ladder. That is possible too. Now, sometimes uh, when there's in our around our college, there's a bunch of construction going, and you will be you'll be looking at scaffolds uh, there. Quite often, last year, I was able to see those stairways. Right? So some of the scaffolds have basically stairs to get onto them. It is possible too. Right? Falling object protection. All right. Anyone working on or around the scaffold must wear a hard hat. Right. Uh, workers on or below the scaffold must protect from must be protected from falling objects. The protection is made by tow boards, mesh, screens, or equivalent. Measure. Here's a toe board. Right? Just like the toes from your feet. Right? That is going to help preventing. There's no 100% prevention. That's why anybody who is around the scaffold must be wearing hard hat. Now, is the hard hat going to give you a 100% guarantee that nothing is going to happen to you when something falls on your head? Of course not. All right. But uh, we do what we possibly humanly can to prevent from accidents to happen. So that is going to help 
but that doesn't mean it's just like uh, you know you get the snow tires on your car in the winter oh yeah i can just go nuts and drive just like if it was summer because i got snow tires no they're going to help all right but that's not 100 percent guarantee that you can just completely go nuts uh no you, no, you can't <laughs> however if you ever drive in the winter around actually any time of the year around the gta area greater toronto area uh, you are going to notice that uh, a lot of people don't get that idea. Right? So brace yourself whenever you drive there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so tow boards will help or decrease the chances of objects to fall from the platform onto the ground. Right? Uh, zoom out a little bit. There's a mesh. Another way from to prevent objects to fall off to off the scaffold or from the platform, whatever it is, uh, uh, on well downwards on somebody's head. Okay, <laughs> come on. All right, what type of scaffold do you use? Now, obviously, this is not something that would be recommended, right? If you are on the construction side and you see something like this going on, uh, the best thing, the best course of action um, would be <clears throat> just leave. Yeah. This is not a proper way of doing things. All right, types of scaffolds. Uh, fabricated frame scaffold, pump jack scaffold, ladder jack scaffold, trestle horse, mobile scaffold, roof bracket, top plate scaffold, uh, area lifts, work platforms, that and that. We're going to look at some of that. This is a trestle and horse. That's what it looks like. You're not going to get too high on, uh, on that. Uh, but uh, uh, these are these are some possibilities. Okay, here's a pump jack. Sometimes you're going to see uh, people working on the well, mostly of the siding or doing some construction on the side of the house. Uh, here's a frame. And here's a foot pedal that you can just pump it up or pump it down, depending on how you set that, All right? Here's a platform that's called a pump jack. Ladder jacks, oops, come on. There you go. That's what the ladder jack is. Obviously, there's no. This is not a pump jack because you don't uh, uh, don't. I don't trust that. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you know, here's the thing. Um, you gotta feel comfortable. If you are not hundred percent comfortable with the, the safety of that, don't do it. And I'm serious. And there's nothing wrong with refusing some of the jobs because for some reason you don't feel safe. How do you know? If you're hundred percent sure that things are safe and you're well rested. You didn't have like a drinking party the night before, and then you are hungover and half awake. Uh, don't work on heights. Just don't. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you know that there's a bit of a red flag um, before you start working on heights or approach any kind of a task that requires some extra safety measures? When you look at things and you look away and you look back again and you go, yeah, maybe, I don't know. Uh-huh. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um. Done. Right. 
So when you start uh, looking at things again and again, and if you notice that you're going to try to convince yourself that things possibly could be safe, then chances are that something is not right. So don't go, don't do it. Right? Ladder jacks, a couple of examples. So you move those things manually and uh, you can also see uh, uh, when, uh, when it comes to working on heights, um, there's a separate special course on that that involves the harnesses and uh, dropping yourself in a certain way. Uh, believe it, uh, believe me or not, but you can you can uh, you can strap yourself in a wrong way. If you strap yourself and you use the wrong harness or the right harness in the wrong way, you can hurt yourself beyond belief. Right? Not only you have to have the harness, but you have to use that harness properly. Okay. Fabricated frame. Here's an example of a fabricated frame. So you buy the whole kit in one place and you put it together, or as I said, uh, there are companies who will come on site and uh, for a fee, they will set it up for you. Uh, they will safety it and uh, then you can use that. So this is a fabricated frame type of a scaffold. Um, guardrails, example of guardrails. From year to year, some of the safety rules might change. So whatever is now uh, could be okay now and three years down the road, uh, some of the rules might be changed. However, uh, it might be just a small details as far as the guardrails. If people are working on the roof, you need to have the guardrails. Just sometimes when you drive around or you walk around and you see people walking on the roof, you are going to see those guard guardrails on the roof installed. So basically uh, you don't fall off the roof. And uh, so when it comes to uh, scaffolds, guardrails are also required. What happens if you don't have the guardrails? You increase your chances of falling out of it. Well, it's as simple as that. Right, cross bracing, cross bracings, just as we're talking. That's an example of a cross bracing. Cross bracings must be installed. If they are not installed, the whole frame is not stable and they must be installed properly. And uh, with some previous slides, we, as we could tell, those should not be climbed. You should not be climbing those to get onto the platform. Yeah, right? Here's the planks, here's the platform. All right. Fabricated frame continuing. Use of uplift pins. When you assemble the frame section upon section, they do the frame should be secured with the uplift pins. Right. Just almost like a cotter pin, but mechanical, and a bigger version of it. It's called uplift pin. You put it in there. There are there are openings, there are holes going right through. You put that, and you join the sections one with each other. All right, fabricated frame continuing. Fabricated frames or uh, scaffolds. You can't, sometimes you just can't put those uh, against the building without uh, being tied into the building. So scaffolds within the height to base width ratio of more than four to one must be restrained from tipping by guying, tying, bracing or equivalent uh, means. Base four to one. Four to one. More than four to one. So here's a length. And here's a length. 
if that thing is more than the ratio of four to one, that whole structure should be secured to the wall or to the face of the building. What are guides or guying? These are guys, guy wires. Just so you know what that is. Supporting brackets, bracketing support. That also helps, right? So that's, that's the bracing, sorry, the bracing support. Okay. Bracing, that's what bracing support is. So just like, like extenders, okay? Increasing the base. Remember, we're talking about the base, the, um, what happened, uh, when does the strike, when is the structure going to tip, including you? Mm -hmm. When the center of gravity goes beyond the base that you're standing on, no ifs, ends, and buts, just the law of physics. When the center of gravity of whatever the structure is moves beyond the base vertically. Whatever the structure is, including you standing, you are going to tip. Or the structure is going to tip. It's going to fall down. It rarely falls up. Hmm? Uh, mobile scaffold, all right? Do not move. So mobile scaffold, um, you can see the scaffold on wheels. So it's like a mini scaffold. So, so people can reach uh, the ceiling, for example, or uh, whatever it work on the heights here. Uh, do not move that while you're on the platform. Okay, so it says do not move while occupied unless specifically designed for such movement. For example, like a scissor lift. Right? It's a mechanical device and still, uh, whenever you use the scissor lift, whenever you're going to move, uh, it is... You know the safest way is to uh, to bring it down and then move and then bring it up. Yeah. Sometimes you're going to use the battery a lot of it. Uh, before moving, inspect for pits, holes, or obstructions in, on the floor. Right. You don't want any potholes uh, because if you're if you're on that thing, if it is designed to move while you're on it. Uh, you have to kind of always make, make sure because this is not a consumer type of products products we're talking about. This is not a consumer type of environment. Consumer type of environment is you buy yourself a, a vacuum cleaner in some sort of department store. You buy yourself some sort of a tea kettle and you don't need to be an electrician uh, or mechanic or whatever else in order to use that piece of equipment. It is designed in a such a way that people do not have to be educated in certain areas like electricity or so on. You just use it. This is not that kind of environment. This is a construction environment. Things are raw. So it is up to you to watch for your safety. How do you watch for this? One of the ways of, of, of being safe is to develop good habits. Why do you need to develop good habits? is because when you are tired and when you're not fully 100%, uh, any situations like that happen, at some point you're going to be tired. Your attention goes down a little bit. Your logic goes down a little bit. That's when habits kick in and that's what can save your life. Um, before moving, inspect the pits for push the base on or near the bottom. So when you're pushing the platform, whatever it is, obviously try to push it as low, apply the force as low as possible, because the higher you put the force on, the greater chances of tipping it would be. Okay. Mobile scaffold, continuing. Okay, casters, wheels must be locked to prevent movement of scaffold when stationary. Caster wheels, that's what the caster wheels are. Right? Things on wheels. Unlocked or locked, you use your foot. And even though when you lock it, this is a construction environment, things can get dirty, things can get damaged, inspect things. 
those caster wheels should be locked when the platform should be stationary. All right. Other ways, other uh, contraptions that uh, <clears throat> are used to hold you um, somewhere high when you have when you have to do your work. Yeah. Right. Roof brackets, scaffold brackets must be constructed to form a pitch on the roof and create a level work surface. So, what does this mean? Whatever the platform is that you're going to be working on, it has to be straight, it has to be leveled. Reason? Um, gravity, right? <laughs> Brackets must be nailed into place. They must be fastened into place when it, come, when it comes to working on the roof. Uh, when brackets cannot be nailed into place, uh, three-quarter manila rope should uh, should be used to secure in place. Uh, I'm not going to touch on that. Unless you're going to be working on the roof, you're going to receive additional special training when it comes to that. Um, and the workers must use personal fall arrest system. What's a fall arrest? It's a fall prevention type of a system, which consists of a harness, and the harness should be secured to some sort of a surface that is going to prevent you from reaching the ground with the speed that is going to be more than you like it to be. Okay. And it has to be done properly. If you secure your harness, or if you use the wrong harness, or secure it not properly, it's just as dangerous or, as, or even more dangerous than falling from, uh, from, from the high, uh, from, from a high surface, from a high area. Why? Could be, how could it be more dangerous? Well, if you fall from really, really high kind of a place, you're going to die quicker. If you fall and you're going to be unsec not secured, secured not properly, and then you're going to suffer before you die. Right? I'm not trying to be funny here. I'm just trying to give you the picture of what can happen. And this is the reality. Right? So, uh, things have to be done not just for show, not just so the safety list can be checked off. Things have to be done properly. And how do you do it properly? Training, 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 education, training, and on the side job, on the job side, you're still going to get some specific training when it comes to performing a specific task. I'm just kind of raising your awareness when it comes to that. Um, and this is the last, this is the last slide that uh, uh, we're talking about that um, have to do with what we have to cover. This is week nine. I suppose I should uh, prepare some sort of a quiz for you guys. I'm going to, um, let's see. Yeah. Can we, yeah. Now if somebody wants to say something, and now you're allowed to unmute yourself. <clears throat> Try not to. Try to find the power within yourself. Uh, and it's a special kind of power to, to kind of not make animal noises um, and disrupt the class. You know, it's a special kind of power, but maybe you can find that within you, all right? It's in you to give. <laughs> all, right. Um, all right, so this covers the, the these two lectures. They cover the ladder and scaffold safety. Uh, by no means you are qualified to set up a scaffold. Uh, this is just this I just gave you here the the kind of awareness point that you can use. Um, maybe because of that, what you got, maybe you're going to decide not to use it and that's all right. That's also that also would be a correct decision. As I said before, once a long time ago, I borrowed a chainsaw from one of my neighbors so I could cut some things in the backyard. And before I used, because I never used the chainsaw before, I hit the internet to kind of get some sort of a safety 
um, tips on how to use a chainsaw. And after I watched a couple of YouTube videos, I decided that I'm not going to use that chainsaw. It was a correct decision proof. I'm standing here in front of you and I can talk to you. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to maybe next week, I'm going to deploy a short quiz. What kind of a chainsaw was it? Uh, I don't remember. It was orange. <laughs> I'm not a chainsaw user. Right. Um, yeah, try you know even you know try to get uh, get yourself educated because um, the stuff that you're getting here is just to raise your awareness on what you might expect when you perform certain types of uh, tasks. But keep educating yourself. Keep educating yourself. Keep self studying. Keep self educating. There's there are tons of materials on the pretty much on the internet right now that you can use. Um, now, when it comes to uh, that kind of idea, I'm just going to tell you that if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be sitting here and talking to you. I would be probably somewhere, never mind. Uh, because uh, when I was, when I started riding a, mod, started riding a motorcycle some long time ago, uh, yes, I took the course that was well, money well spent. Uh, it saves your life. How much is your life worth? Yes, I did the safety course on motorcycle riding and uh, it's worth every penny as much as your life is worth. But then on top of that, I spent countless hours watching, researching safety when it comes to riding a motorcycle. And because I did that extra work, I had that one situation that because if I didn't do that, I would be a big kind of a blob of things on the road, right? So, um, yeah, by saying that, I'm going to need to prep for the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> I'm just reading the chat lines here. Yeah, why not? You can prepare for the zombie apocalypse. Not a bad idea. Do the extra work. Do overkill when it comes to safety. And then maybe because you did that extra work, it's going to save you in a situation that is considered to be like usual, right? Uh, you want the uh, blob of the road. Yeah, there are two types of injuries when it comes to be, when it comes to road safety, all right? Two types of failures. Failure number one, you're standing on the side of the road, kicking and screaming and being angry. And the other type of uh, failure would be uh, you're lying on the road moaning from pain, right? So um, there are diff different, types of, uh, different types of failures also with the equipment that we're going to use as well. Okay, uh, okay. guys, uh, uh, whoever is going to be in the lab, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed. Some of you uh, were in the... <laughs> uh, some of... Um, Mm, I had a, one of the sections during the lab today, and at the end, we just had some extra time, so we hit the pipe benders, and we were just uh, fooling around with those, and I noticed that a lot of you guys uh, uh, be, became really kind of excited uh, with, uh, with the equipment that we use, the pipe benders, and using the half-inch EMT to bend, uh, well, we did back-to-back -back bands, actually. Uh, some specific ones, and uh, that I could see some excitement in, in some of you guys. That's what I want to see. Okay, it was great. Cool. All right. So expect uh, at some point, expect some sort of a quiz to be released and followed by a test. Uh, all right. I'm a mini. All right. Cool, guys. I'll see you when I see you, and uh, have a wonderful end of the week, and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, guys. Um, bye.